this event is co-sponsored by Beyond Toxics, by Williams Waterway Project in Selma, by Precious Dirt in Selma, by Forest Land Dwellers in Lane County, by um, uh -oh, Pesticide Poisoning Victims of Triangle Lake. Close enough? Close enough. <laughs> okay, by Zero Chemical Trespass. Did I forget anyone? OPOG. OPOG, of course, the Oregon Pesticide Action Work Group, which is the umbrella group for this activity. We're here because we want to make it clear that I believe all of us would agree that it's a violation of our human rights to be chemically poisoned, that our government is responsible for protecting the health of the people and that we feel our government has not stepped up to the plate fully to do so. People in this beautiful part of Lane County have been working for decades on this issue. I'm looking out and I'm seeing faces who have put in years and years into alerting our government, medical professionals, the media, and others, our state agencies, that we have a problem here and people are sick. They're physically sick and they're also spiritually despondent that not more has been done to stop the practice of spraying pesticides from the air with helicopters. This practice has impacted not only this community but our friends down in Josephine County where they're standing by their lakeside, Lake Selmac at this very moment, having a similar gathering. And so we want to be in solidarity with them. So I don't want to say too much more other than to say this. Uh, in terms of human rights, the following policy should be in place with our government. The government should guarantee us the public right to know. That means that when pesticides or any kind of chemicals are used and expelled into the environment, we the people have the right to know that. We have the right to know it before it's done, and we have the right to know it how much, when, where, and what. We need to have the right to informed consent. You should not be sprayed upon without your knowledge and certainly without your consent. I'm imagining you wouldn't consent to it, but you have that right. Our government should follow the precautionary principle. That means that we prioritize safety and health at all times and environmental protection. And our main priority is the health of our children because they are our future. They are also the most vulnerable of all of us. Children have not the same capacity as you adults here to respond and heal from chemical exposure. Chemical exposure early in life can set them on a course of permanent illness for the rest of their life, and that is certainly a violation of their rights. There is such a thing as the Convention on the Rights of the Child, and it reads like this. States and governments have a particular duty to protect children and pregnant women from environmental toxics that may comprise the, compromise the child's physical, mental, spiritual, or social well-being. So in closing, on behalf of all the groups sponsoring this and Beyond Toxics in particular, I just want to say we owe it to our children to build a society that pays attention to the right not to be chemically trespassed rather than to ignore that human right. I want to introduce our most honored guest speaker, Esther Stutzman. She is an elder with the Kalapuya tribe. The Cal All the tribes of Oregon have long been supporters of environmental protection, particularly protecting the health and future of our native fish species. And Esther will give an invocation and speak about her tribe's approach to this problem too. Please give a round of applause to Esther. I've already asked Esther for permission to do this. Um, out into the media for the last two days and this morning to the governor's office. We have sent a 
a respectful and humble, humble demand for Governor Kitzhaber to put a moratorium using his um, uh, executive order authority to stop all sprays until they can prove that the sprays do not cause harm, until they can prove that, the, uh, that our health issues are not caused by the sprays, and we're asking for a moratorium on all aerial spraying in Oregon. Uh, there is a petition going around. We ask you to sign it. It will be sent to the governor on Monday or later on today through fax. Thank you very much for indulging us. Yeah. I'd like to take a few minutes to ask our creator to look upon this gathering of people of like minds to look upon this gathering of people who have an interest in our future and look upon this gathering of people who are honoring our ancestors, all of our ancestors. We ask the grandfathers and the grandmothers to smile upon us as we go about a very difficult task. We ask them to smile upon us as we pass teachings on to our children. We ask the grandmothers and the grandfathers to be patient with us and we will be patient with the things that come. We must ask the grandfathers and the grandmothers to smile upon us as we go about our daily tasks and to bring about those solutions to those problems that we see today. For those solutions will come if we believe in exactly what our heart says to us. And so, grandfathers, grandmothers, Thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for a beautiful day and a beautiful word. Uh -huh. I'm a member of the Confederated Tribes of Siletz. I'm Kalapuya and I'm Coos. In my experiences of being a, a tribal person, who's very connected with the roots of my culture, I have seen over the years many, many impacts of things that have happened since the coming of the moving people. These things have had a drastic effect on our culture. As we all know and as we all look in history, it's been the same all across America and all around the world. The aboriginal cultures, the native cultures, have been devastated by many, many things, uh, by war, by disease. But by those things that are secret, those things that have happened to many, many minority cultures, the things that we really can't touch, the things that we suspect are happening, are really happening. It was not long ago, in fact, when I was a child, we would go out and dig camas to eat. We would go out and harvest many and many of the native plants. But we don't do that so much anymore because of the poisons, because they sicken us. The camas fields that were flourishing in the Willamette Valley are poisoned by fertilizers and pesticides. Those plants that we used to gather from the wetlands and the swamplands, we don't know what's been draining into those places. We don't eat those anymore. Even the grasses that we harvested from the hills are no longer suitable in many places because those chemicals, those pesticides that have been sprayed on them have altered them. They're no longer the right kind of texture for our basketry or our hats or those things that we care to make. And so those type of secret things that are coming to light now are those things that we need to pay attention to, to realize that we do have an investment in the future. We have always said among our people 
that we are simply caretakers of the earth. We don't own it. But we've also said that we are simply borrowing the earth from our children. And that is our job to take care of it just as it is to take care of something that does not belong to us. I wish you well. I will fully support these things that we're all assembled here for. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So open mic because it's voices of Oregonians. So I'm done and I invite you all to come up. We're asking people to limit it to two minutes. I also want to say there are petitions here on the table asking our uh, government and our governor to adopt a different set of policies for uh, forestry spray and please sign up. Also, if you came here today and you want a pesticide free cup, come back and see me. Thanks. Wait, 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 Lisa. Can oh. you talk about the interview? Oh, thank you, Gary. Sorry. Um, we have a number of wonderful camera people here and also thank you KZI for being here. Uh, but I'm not referring to KZI. Uh, if you would like to have your story, your personal chemical trespass story recorded, we are asking you to please to go see Douglas. We'll just step over there. Oh, there he is. Yeah, over Douglas here. over there and his uh, cameras over there. We are recording these to create a collage to share with our government. And we'll ask you to sign a release letting you know that it will only be used for the purposes of educating people on the problems of chemical trespass. So please Come over to see uh, Douglas uh, and check in over there. Anything else? That's it. Great. <laughs> Mother Nature has cooperated quite well with this beautiful weather today. For that, we give thanks. My name is Day Owen, and I'm founder of Pitchfork Rebellion. Uh, we held our first rally almost exactly eight years ago today down the highway at the site of a clear cut where there was a mud slide and aerial sprays uh, that led to many families becoming quite sick. When we say quite sick, let me tell you what happened to me. Roseburg Timber had promised to let us know before they would aerial spray the mountain across the street from us. They didn't. The helicopters were spraying. I ran outside to look. The top of my head, I wasn't wearing this hat that day, the top of my head began to burn like it was on fire. I'd never felt such pain on the skin of my head. My face began to burn. I could taste chemical in my mouth. I became short of breath. I called the doctor's office, told them what was happening to my wife and I. She'll tell her story, Neela, of what happened to herself that day. Over the phone, we were told, you don't need to come in, it's all in your head. <laughs> we went in anyway. And I know the doctor probably wishes we didn't because the first thing I did was to vomit all over his floor. <laughs> Not on purpose. When we're talking about getting sick, we're talking about real people getting real sick. And even my children have tested positive in the testing that happened with Dr. Barr. 100% of 36 people that were tested by Dr. Barr were found positive for both 2,4-D and atrazine in our urine. I, because of uh, wanting to limit myself so that more of you can share, I'm simply going to uh, share with you that the big obstacle to getting the legislative change and to get the governor to do what we want is a particular lobbyist organization called Oregonians for Food and Shelter let me tell you, even though they're called Oregonians for Food and Shelter, here's a list of their board of directors. It includes Monsanto, 
DuPont Dow chemical. It includes Syngenta. Syngenta is the maker of atrazine. It includes Weyerhaeuser, who's the one that's clear-cut these beautiful mountains by this lake, where last spring, on April 8th and April 19th, the aerial sprayed here. Many of us got sick. And we went and we complained to the agencies of Oregon. And do you know, to this day, almost one year later, they have not investigated the April 8th or April 19th spray events that sickened so many of our community. Brothers and sisters, thank you for being here. You know, they used to say, where's your proof? Pitchfork Rebellion started eight years ago, and for seven years we heard, where's your proof? Well, now we got it, and it's in a little vial in the laboratory. And now what we want to know, Governor, is will you give us a moratorium on aerial spray? How many people want to see a moratorium, a shutdown of aerial spray? Thank you very much. Uh, Neela, can you share what happened to you that day? They have been poisoned many times over the last eight years since we moved here. Um, it is so horrible that I absolutely fear to have this stuff come anywhere near me again. It's so horrible that you just, you feel like you're going to die. And for months later, it's in your system. Uh, my first exposure was um, about five years ago. I got so sick it took about almost a year for the stuff to get out of my system. It took months. Then they sprayed again uh, about nine months later and I was wiped out again for the longest time. I, like I said, I just I hope that they can stop the spraying completely, stop all aerial spraying and ground spraying because I get sick from the ground sprays that they do too. Um, last spring they did uh, two, a couple of aerial sprays near us and they did some ground sprays near us. It was horrible. And I just pray that nobody ever has to get exposed to this stuff again because it is so sickening. Um, I just pray that this stuff is outlawed and they, they quit making these chemicals, period. That there's no aerial spraying and no ground spraying. People who really care about the Mother Earth and about their families and about their future and the water do not use chemicals, period. And so I just pray that this will stop now because I cannot take it anymore. Please, thank you. My name is Lynn Bowers. I, the group that I work with is called Forest Land Dwellers. And uh, whenever I start talking to people about herbicide sprays, they say, oh, you live in Triangle Lake. Or, do you know Day Owen? <laughs> and I say, yeah, I know Day Owen. But I don't live in Triangle Lake, I live in Fox Hollow. It's sort of a fancy suburb of Eugene. It's at my house is actually eight air miles from the center of the city of Eugene, downtown Eugene. Last September 9th, Justina Land and Timber Company sent the helicopter to our valley. The wind was blowing away from us so that the spray was headed towards the people living on the other side of the mountain. This is, aerial spray practice is just stupid. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Insane. Uh, I, I made these banners. We've got an identical one down there at Lake Selmac. We're, we're conceiving of them as postcards to the governor. We've got crayons and markers here. We would like everybody to add their comments, and these will be delivered to the governor this month. 
Please help. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Ingrid Edstrom. I'm a family nurse practitioner out of Eugene, Oregon. Um, my company is called Infrared Breast Health. I have an infrared camera that's able to pick things up in the breast three to eight years before the mammograms will ever see it. I came here about six years ago and the patients that I was seeing, I began to see a trend that was very disturbing. I was finding that some of the women that had normal scans for thermography tended to be organic eaters, had a healthy lifestyle, and there were several other aspects that seemed to be uh, putting them into the um, section of, of normal scans. However, what I've been seeing, which is a very uh, dangerous trend, I feel, is in the last six years, the women that have been toxically exposed to herbicides and pesticides have extremely abnormal thermography scans. Now, when I say abnormal thermography scans, about 90% of those women will develop cancer in the next three to five years. Um, I was able to go to a meeting that Lisa organized about a year or so ago, and I brought Dr. Ken Welker with me, who's a breast surgeon, and I was able to show the images that I have on the uh, website, which is infraredbreasthealth.com, and there's a PowerPoint there that we took to the county commissioners, or at least um, county commissioners and some of the folks in the health department, to show them what these images actually look like for people that are toxically exposed. And we were able to sort of slow down the roadside spraying here in Lane County, and I'd like to see this go to a state level and a national level. Now, I'm here today also is to say that I would like to offer my time and the camera's time if there's any children here that have been toxically exposed to scan them for free. Uh, the imaging is uh, totally uh, no radiation. The camera sits three feet from the children. Uh, it's totally safe. And what I'd like to do is see if there are abnormal scans with small children that have been toxically exposed, and I'd like to compare them with other children of the same age and gender that have not been toxically exposed. And if these images are coming out like the women that I'm seeing, I would like to provide that evidence to uh, the, the body of um, information that Lisa and others are trying to get together to take to our legislators to show that this is a dangerous situation. These chemicals are changing estrogenic uh, effects in the breast that the camera can actually see. And if you'd like to have um, information, come on over to the table here, and I'd be very happy to chat with the moms and dads for some of these children that have been exposed. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I didn't introduce myself before, I think. I'm Amy Pincus Merwin. I've been working on these issues for about 30 years. I'm a, I've been a property owner in Deadwood for 30 years. And um, I've collected an anecdotal epidemiology of all the autoimmune diseases, the cancers, the chemical sensitivities, um, the birth defects, and unfortunately so many more. Um, aberrant health conditions in the Deadwood area that happened as a result of the Agent Orange spraying back in the late 70s and 80s. Although they don't spray on National Forest anymore around Deadwood because the Cellular National Forest successfully logs through the um, late successional reserve forest plan put together by Clinton and Gore. Um, all the hills around Deadwood that are privately owned and any private timber in Oregon is clear cut and then sprayed. It's a crazy model because economically it's more successful to uh, do a late successional reserve thin, take the middle aged trees, leave the babies, leave the grandparent trees and uh, you don't need to spray because the seedlings are not overgrown by uh, uh, native forest plants such as alder and viney maple or even the invasive blackberries that we love to make jam out of. Um, so it, it, I've been taking stories from people for about the last five, six years. If you don't want to stay around after the event today, um, I've got a sign-up sheet over here and I'd be happy to come to you out in this area and take your story so that we can create the archive and present it uh, respectfully to our legislators and to our governor to help them realize that poisoning the people of Oregon who are in, living in rural areas who are frequently isolated and get even more isolated when they're sick 
is a foolish practice. The um, Right to Form and Forest Act, which was instituted by Oregonians for Food and Shelter, the front group for Monsanto, DuPont, and, and Dow that Dave made reference to, was put into place about 30... 30, 30 to 40 years ago. They have a 30 to 40 year head start on having the, literally the right to poison us. And by that Oregon Right to Farm and Forest Act, um, they are protected from all liability from the sprays. And that liability goes back to who? The state of Oregon and us, the taxpayers. And so we are literally allowing them to poison us and then front the bill to get uh, healed. They also, of course, are connected to the pharmaceutical companies that, for instance, for someone like myself as a breast cancer survivor, makes the tamoxifen. Uh, so the petrochemical companies not only create the pesticides, they create the pharmaceuticals, and it's a really interesting racket of being able to make us sick and then make us well and make money on both ends. And people pass in between. People uh, get very, very sick in between. They don't know who to turn to. They don't know what help to get because doctors are not trained to look for pesticide poisoning. Oh well, collateral damage. It's pretty much a war. And, but it's a gentle war. We will win because we're right. And the, uh, we are asking the governor to put a moratorium so that there can be time to consider and so the legislature, le legislature can overturn the Right to Farm and Forest Act and the preemption laws that stop the counties also, that stop the counties also from protecting us. Thank you very much. And also there's a sign-up sheet for the governor going around. Please sign it and get it back to me. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, so my entire family, my partner and my two kids, um, tested positive for 2,4-D and atrazine. So today I stand here because of our children. I carry these books as a reminder of the mothers before us who have stood here for our children. I stand here today to find solutions because our children are counting on us. Our children deserve a future with clean air and clean water, and together we can have this future. Together we can end all of the lies. Together we can put an end to all of the doubt. And together we can shed light upon the ignorance that has ruled for far too long. For it is ignorance that would value a fat wallet more than a healthy child. Today, this ignorance ends. I know we can stop the poisoning. I know we can have a clean and healthy future for our children. Today, the poisons end. Today, we stand up as one voice, and we make that healthy future become a reality for our children. I stand here today because of my children. Why are you here? Let's put aside all of our differences and create a future that we've all been dreaming of for our children. Thank you. The question of why am I here, I'm here because Aaron asked us to come. My name is Christina Hubbard. I'm with Forest Web of Cottage Grove, and we stand in solidarity with everything that you guys are working on right now. We've worked with Pitchfork in the past on Whopper issues. We've got some big stuff coming up again. ONC lands are really about to be taken over by the counties if they get a chance. Not managed under federal laws anymore, managed under county laws. We're going to be looking at more clear cuts, more spraying everything we don't want and we have to stick together and fight together to stop this we're with you That's thanks right.
Uh, I'm Michelle Holman. I'm a board member of Beyond Toxics. I moved to Deadwood in 1977. In 1979, I had a beautiful daughter. Um, and over the next 16 years, I had seven miscarriages. Um, I had a beautiful son in 1995, and I had three more miscarriages. That's my story. That or not, <laughs> <laughs> My neighbors and friends, I'm Mark McNutt. I've lived in uh, Deadwood since 1984. In the 80s, um, I was employed. Uh, with a lot of these timber companies and as well as the feds and others um, to do um, to do things like slash burning and planting and things like that I've worked all over these mountains here um, I've had a pesticide license once for spraying BGR um, and uh, I never went to a class to get that they said oh don't worry so and so went to the class for you um, you know, so I've, I've seen um, some interesting things happen on these hills. I bought the land in Deadwood in '84 because my neighbors um, were really uh, very successful at convincing the government to stop um, stop spraying because of all the miscarriages and the uh, other effects that were showing up uh, amongst the children and the adults. Um, so I just want to call for. It's not like stop, stop, stop. It's it's mostly, uh, I'd like to couch this in terms of let's get back to traditional farming, traditional tree farming. Not like end, you know, end clear cutting forever, um, but basically small, small units, no need for spray, mixed species, just the way that nature does it. I mean, let's get back to nature because before the before the 60s before Vietnam we were um, we were not uh, we were not doing what we're doing now and what happened was you know I, I go back to the days <coughs> where I'm like stirring uh, what is what we refer to as a luma gel and it's in but what most people if you add agent orange to it it's called napalm and uh, so I, I'd be like loading up the helicopters um, you know, this stuff to spray on the hillside and so forth. Um, and it's packed in um, army colors with labels like June 1969 on it. You know, and this is what's going on in the 80s. And it's like, okay, it's like the, uh, the spray companies had, um, had a vested interest in keeping the poisons going, keeping, you know, the supply going. And uh, now there's no memory that it's actually cheaper to go along with nature rather than trying to eradicate it and manipulate it and all this other stuff. It's like, let's get back to, to natural, traditional farming. That's what, that's what I'm asking for today. Which of course means end, end sprayings of pesticides and a few other things. But let's go forward to, to the, the future and the past. My name is Mariana, and I moved here with my husband in 2006, and I joined the light rather than fight, because what we're doing essentially here is that we are shedding the light upon the darkness that has been imposed upon people by imposing the filth that desecrates the life and as we can look around and look upon our world and see what's happening in our world it's happening everywhere and what I'm saying is light is happening everywhere the darkness is has been trying so hard and has been doing what it has been doing causing the suffering and the sadness and the 
the secretion, but we must stay strong in our emotional bodies in order to be able to shed the light and keep shedding the light. I like to stand straight. This is a uh, kind of. I like to straighten my spine. <laughs> so what I'm saying here is that I am so grateful to all of your light that has that has decided to come here and speak out and say no to the ignorance. Because we will not succumb to the darkness. We will speak out our truth and we will take this earth back. Yeah. This earth belongs to purity, to freedom, to justice. We will not stand for anything less. And I command that all of the light of the universe through our light comes forth and empowers us all to give no power to what's felt. I am done with it. We are power and I demand. It is okay to demand our freedom. May all these trees hear this message and may it spread unto the entire earth that we will not stand for the darkness, that we are the power and the light will prevail within us. As long as we have life, we have light. We are the power. Guess what? The timber industry, all of the, all of the craziness and the filth, you have no power. Your day is done. We are the power. We will not be saddened anymore because sadness creates weakness. We will be strong. And only if we're strong we can make this through and bring this earth into the balance, bring our lives into the balance, and stay our course and commit it to our freedom. We are powerful and all the lies and the filth and the desecration shall be enlightened. We will walk into the rooms of the meetings. We will stand in front of the government. And we will speak our truth. And truth will, shed, will, shed, will set us free. And the ones that choose to ignore and doubt. And the ones that are on fence. They're the same as the ones that choose to, that choose to poison. Because we will, not, we will not stand for ignorance any longer. Either you're serving the light or you're over here desecrating. We are here and we are gathered today in unity in our hearts to insist and demand our birthright and justice to all life. We honor the truth and will not set, settle for anything else. We are asking all who honor the truth to say no to the filthy behavior of poisoning our land and the life. We are determined with unyielding faith that what is wrong shall cease forever. And we will see this earth in balance. We know that pesticide trespass is wrong. And we know that all is affected. Do you know that in Eugene, the water has been polluted by pesticides for over decades now? I have all the documents. Do people in Eugene even know what's happening? I'm here. Thank you. We need to harvest the people from Eugene. They need to start stand up. We need masses of people to say no to the secretion of life. And it will be so. Because guess what? The constructiveness, the light, is the way. And it is the strongest. The darkness will coil upon itself. 
the greater it is, the greater uncoil. And we may wonder, well, how can it, it hasn't happened? Well, it's going to happen. It's happening. Keep your faith. Keep your strength. Do not allow these feelings of filth to succumb, to, 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 to come over you. We will say no to the political graft that dishonors the lives, the life. And we will say no to the corporations that have been encompassing our government. And we will demand the government that will serve the people and be for the people, by the people. We are the power and we will stand our, our ground and we will keep educating people, we will keep spreading the light, we will keep demanding our freedom and the balance to all life through love, through wisdom, through power and determination. I love you all. Thank you all for being here and for speaking up. Thank you. I don't really like a soapbox, so um, I'm just going to say it's all connected, alright? I mean, everything, every individual on this planet to the planet that we're standing on, alright? It's the separation that's brought about day in, day out by the media around us and the corporations, Republicans against Democrats, independents against all of it, until we pull our heads out of our, you know, respective holes, excuse my phrasing, and realize that everything on this planet is connected from the trees that are being cut and sprayed here to the shit that's getting sold in our communities day in day out we take our limp lumber our timber we take our resources we ship it out to china we ship it out to these other countries so they can make plastic crap to send back to us to make our children sick it's it's not just the spray it it's all of it. It's all connected, and the spraying's got to stop. The corporations have to stop. Maybe if we could get together with some of the Occupy people, the ones that aren't interested in being home bums and living down or occupy the place that the helicopter leaves from. All right? Get connected. Mark Mentor, uh, graduated from Triangle Lake, trying not to get choked up. Um, my uncle's a doctor out here, been the doctor for a long time, since way before I was born. Um, you know, there's not a little checkbox on the health insurance that says chemical poisoning, you know, unfortunately. Um, the, uh, anyways, my story, I am... My mom had some miscarriages. I was born with a birth defect. I'd rather not talk about. Um, uh, I just needs to stop. It's bullshit. Uh, you know, last ten years I've seen it got so worse, and maybe I've just acknowledged it more. But I don't know. I guess the last couple of years it hasn't been so much spraying around, but still, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Uh, I think more people are aware and. I need, yeah, people need to be more aware, just keep telling people, I don't know. Um, I like to take my bus to the D.C., actually, I got a school bus, and I like to take it to D.C. and, uh, you know, go to, go to the lawns and say, you know, order it to be stopped until it does, but we'll see if this thing works. Um, but, yeah, if you guys want to contribute some money, I'll probably be leaving in March or something. <laughs> yeah. Might as well get the fuck out of here, right? They're gonna just stay. Good, <laughs> Sorry for being late. I'm sad that I missed things that came before. But uh, I'm Kristen, and I'm from uh, Eugene. I've been organizing with Occupy Eugene since just in the interest of preserving uh, the ability to do more radical direct action. 
So um, under that, we would like to be able to do as much as we can with the issues that are going on in Triangle Lake and all over the Cascadia region. Um, we Woo-hoo! take a very different approach, um, and we've faced some resistance from that. Um, we're definitely of the idea that reform has probably not gone as well as many people had hoped for, and there are some other ways to kind of seek change. So. Um, We'd love to work with the group here and anyone else who's interested. And then you, brother. I just want to say a couple things. Um, we, we come onto this earth that's, a, that's our gift. And um, we have the power to destroy or the power to take care of the earth. And um, we need to take care of the earth. And it'll take care of us. What I see going on here is um, people who don't live in this area have investments in the woods around here and they want to make money and um, and we're in the way and um, we have to continue to be in the way <laughs> and uh, we have to continue to take care of the earth thank you My name is Mikkel. I don't really have much to say that hasn't been emphasized on pretty well already, but uh, I just want everyone to take a moment and look around at what we see here. You know, the corporations and the people that are committing the poisonings, they don't see the value that we see here. The only value they see is removing it and taking it somewhere else, whereas we see the value in supporting it, embracing it. And in all our days, you know, that humans have been on this planet, we will never build anything as impressive as nature. We can fight it for as long as we want, but we will never win. It was here before us. It'll be here long after us. And that's all I wanted to say. Be thankful for it. Thank you. Chelsea Rose. I'm an aspiring homesteader in the Deadwood area. As an animal, I near building a nest because I want very much to have a family. And as an animal, I send my condolences to all the mothers and fathers and children who have been affected. I am, as an animal, feeling in much despair because I don't know where I can make a nest that my children are going to be safe and not be poisoned. I live in an area that has put its hold down and said no more in this area and still, you know, the mother moves. Her waters move under, her waters move over, and it's everywhere. And I want to have healthy babies, and I want my friends to have healthy babies, and I want my community to be safe, and I want us to be able to pass things down and know that when we plant fruit trees for our grandchildren, they're actually going to be well and be able to continue to take care of those fruit trees. As a light worker, I believe in our ability to perform magic and to work with the forces of nature for good. And in that way, I just wanted to call down some healing for everybody here. I see so many people who are working so hard, so, so, so hard to make things better, to make things well, to bring back the loop and to close it and make it whole again. And I really just wanted to call down healing for everybody, for people, our friends who want to also have children in the area, our friends who have children and are trying to keep them safe, people who are adults who are children who have been poisoned, and people who are still healing from children that they've lost in this way. We're families and women in this area, man, we're some mama bears. We've got children to protect and we've got life to continue on this planet. And I really, really want to call down healing so that we can do this. Um, I'm Douglas. I moved here four months ago from Los Angeles with my girlfriend. Uh, We came because we wanted to live a a healthier life. Um, 
And I just wanted to speak very quickly to testify to the ignorance of the people outside of Oregon to this kind of issue. And just to let everyone know, um, in case you didn't know, that I don't think the rest of the world knows about these issues. If you can speak to your family and people you work with outside of the area, tell them about this, make sure that they know, because I don't think that people do know, and uh, I think it's important. That's all. Thank you. Douglas is here for to take your uh, testimony if you want it recorded and spread it around so people learn about this and we can help. Every two years, the Department of Forestry in Oregon does an issue scan, and for the last um, two of those, the majority of people who've written to them have said that monitoring pesticide and herbicide use, actually herbicide use in the forest, has been their major concern. And last year in Triangle Lake, I asked the Department of Forestry, who was one of the groups here, what they had done on this issue, and they said nothing. So people are, we are using, we have used the normal channels and nothing has been done. Uh, then I see at that same meeting, locals here saying we have tested our own soil, our own food, our own bodies, and it, the chemicals are not in the food and the soil, but they're in our bodies, so we know they must be coming from the air. And then I heard the people doing the investigation from the state saying we can't afford to test the air. So there again, I see a disconnect between what people are asking for and what uh, the other folks who are trying to protect us are doing, which is frustrating. Uh, also on Oregon, um, Oregonians for Food and Shelter, my husband got a pest control license in 1976 and immediately on receipt of his license he actually was an inspector not an applier he got a letter from Oregon's for food and shelter saying how the rabid environmentalists which I guess we must have both been because we did want the air and soil to stay clean um, were kind of fighting to stop their agenda of OFA Oregon's for food and OFS and that um, we could join this organization. So that tells you that for at least 30 years, Oregonians for Food and Shelter, the chemical companies fund them, and they are organized. And it's just so wonderful to start seeing the rest of us get organized. And um, the other thing I heard last year that still hasn't changed is that uh, we've been asking for what was um, what was actually sprayed and um, I have talked to many timber companies because I've seen them spray where I live and it is very disempowering to see a helicopter spraying and not know you can do anything about it. Um, but anyway, they, when in my conversations they always say, well, you know, there's no, these are legal at the federal level and there's no proof they do any harm and there's no science behind this and here we have an opportunity. There is some science. These folks have got hard data in their bodies now and the, still we're in February and in April this spraying was done and still we have not heard from the chemical companies what they sprayed which is to me an essential part of the science that these folks say they want so I just want to put that out give you a little bit of history um, on this issue and that uh, we can all urge those records to be um, given out to those of us that um, need them. Thank you. I've been a farmer for a while, and uh, like about half of the farmers in the country, I've got arthritis, so my 
leaping up on soapboxes days are over. Um, but uh, in follow up to what the lady said before, I, I guess I could qualify as one of those scientists. I have a PhD in what is called industrial ecology applied to agriculture and I have a master's in agribusiness and natural resource management and and my undergraduate is in agricultural and biosystems engineering. Actually, my dean of agriculture when I was an undergrad was Earl Butts. He got it wrong and I ended up spending a lot of my career <laughs> trying to get it right. Um, actually, I worked overseas for a long time uh, in agricultural development, and we were organic by default. We didn't have all the money to buy the chemicals, so we did it the traditional way and I'd like to address something that we've, we've discussed a little bit but it's what's called intellectual bias and it's in the scientific reporting that goes back to the primarily to the early part of the 20th century and it was the studies that discounted the stewardship of the first peoples and with Esther leading things off today it was particularly a, appropriate because the, the Kalapuya and the other tribes, we uh, labeled them as hunter-gatherers, which gives an impression that they kind of kick back and sort of let things happen. No, they were active stewards of the lands and of the streams, of the fisheries, and, and all the planting and that. It, and uh, we know they were reasonably healthy because you could no, not do what they did unless you were. And there are some interesting anthropology studies done primarily through Portland State, and that's where one of the researchers coined the term intellectual bias, which we know is a, just a euphemism for a common barnyard term. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, the, to do what they did, now think about it, you look at stone, or obsidian and you need to make an arrowhead or a spear point. You look at making a finely woven basket that is watertight. And why would you need a watertight basket to carry liquids? And one of the things you can carry is are fertilized salmon eggs and you can carry fertilized salmon eggs up around physical obstructions that happen intermittently or permanent and we know that they stock the upper reaches of the watersheds because we found that. and that was bad enough until the post-World War II period when Marcus had to be found for all those chemical warfare agents and I remember spraying 2,4-D as a kid on, on uh, a number of crops and it, it has kind of, uh, there is a faintly interesting organic aroma to it which you think gee it doesn't smell that bad but it really is <laughs> that bad um, the but since Earth Day that's about 40 years ago plus um, we've been trying to improve the waters and actually with our economic downturn here the past couple years we're beginning to see salmon go into streams they hadn't been for decades or a generation or more. So we actually know how much our forestry and agricultural practices are askew uh, from where they need to be and what it takes to get it right. And actually it's not that far from getting it right except it can't be a ham-fisted management approach. And another gentleman stated it earlier need lighter, uh, smaller footprints, uh, actually need more people out in the forest looking at smaller parcels rather than coming in with wheeled and trackling equipment that create erosion channels and uh, you're bringing equipment from one place to another and the equipment's bringing in the invasives and the birds are bringing in the invasives and the sprays, all we're doing is creating stronger, vigorous invasives we're not really stopping them at all. We don't need this. Uh, so I'm rambling on here a bit, but I, but the main point I wanted to say, we actually have 
a model of a society that had population in numbers that exerted pressures on the on the local ecology as much as we do now, and they were able to sustain it. And we know they did that for millennia. There's a lesson to be learned there, and that's all I want to say. Thank you. What's your name? Oh, my name is Jimmy Chopper. <laughs> My name's Black Horse, and I'm thinking I could speak loud enough without this mic. Let me know. Let me know if anybody can't hear me. Let me know if anybody can't hear me. <laughs> I just wanted to take a moment and invite all of us to close our eyes for a moment and visualize, imagine happy trees, a happy forest, happy children and happy animals, growing abundantly with joy and thanks for all that we are given. Dancing in this great circle of life, this wonderful gift that we are given. Such a precious beautiful gift. Thank you so much. And once upon a time when we were welcomed here on planet Earth, I see this Earth in a way that we've all seen it together here a moment ago. And somewhere along the way we, we got out of the rhythm of the heartbeat of the mother and somehow forgot our interconnectedness with all life here. And um, I see all you beautiful people and spirits that are on that path to unite together as a tribe and as a family to protect and preserve all of life here. And I wanted to take a moment for all of us just to look at each other, all of us and give so much thanks for our willingness and our love expanding to come together to be able to create a healthy, happy planet for all future life. And I believe in us, and I believe in each and every one of you. Thank you for showing up. Uh Uh Hi, my name is Gwendolyn, um, and I as well have worked a lot with Kristen with Occupy Eugene. And one of the trends I see recently is the inability for the mainstream to make the connection between things that have to do with the environment and the issue of corporate greed. Um, I personally find that pretty amusing because it is a direct example of how the corporate interests in this country will sacrifice uh, the environmental health and human health, human life, for the bottom line. And I, after hearing what was said here today, uh, I feel like, personally, I want to bring this issue to the forefront of Occupy Eugene and start working towards a resolution on this. Uh, making that connection between human health and corporate greed is vital if our movement is to succeed and if we're going to have a healthy planet. So that's my new goal. Thank you so much for doing this today. (laughs) 
Good afternoon. My name is Steve Paulson, and I personally want to thank everyone who has testified today. It's a powerful message you bring. There's many issues related to what we've talked about and heard that haven't been talked about today, but I want to to kind of hint at one. I listen to many people say that they've spent years, five years, 10 years, 30 years, trying to get their government to stop spraying, to stop evil, as many have said it. And I'd like to pose the question, what legitimate government would even allow this to have happened in the first place? That's right. The Declaration of Independence says something about an organization being formed to protect and facilitate life, liberty, and the pursuit of justice. These signs do not speak to justice. A government, a legislature, an executive officer who signed laws that limit your right to pursue in the justice system torts against you is not an entity that was based on our founding principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of justice. That's right. And while I support all of the efforts, and I will work with you to the extent that I can in my small role in life, to get the existing government to change illegitimate laws. More of my energy, and I think more of all of our energy, also needs to go to changing the structure, the existence of the illegitimate government at the city level, the county level, the state level, and the federal level that we have today without change in those organizations, you will not stop the spray, the devastation of countries around the world, the forests around the world. You will not stop the lungs of the planet being ripped asunder. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jan, and we have a lake property a couple places over, and I was just burning some trash when I heard you all, and it's amazing to me that it's about chemicals, because I myself have chemical allergies. I had to grow up with these. I had to go out and try to get a job with chemical allergies, and I was able to work for a company called Mercedes-Benz of Wilsonville because they put me in a bubble. They built me a glass office and you could not come in this office if you had hand lotion, hairspray, deodorant, anything that would perfume, anything that would set me off. So for the people that want to protect their children from sprays and chemicals, this is so dear to my heart because I have to had to live my life like this and it is not easy. I cannot go out to a restaurant and have dinner. I cannot go to the movies and I am grateful to God for able to have a place down at Triangle Lake because this is where I can go to breathe clean air because if I'm at home and someone puts dry airs in their dryer and the and it blows over into my yard, I cannot go outside. So to protect your children, you know, it would be really great because to live a life like I have had has been nothing but difficult. I don't know if I can get up there. Hi, my name is Brenda Gaines, and um, I was raised by the San Francisco Bay, which is so filthy. They have signs all over that say, don't eat the fish. 
And people are filling it in constantly with garbage and, and asbestos and all kinds of poisonous stuff. And so um, 16 years ago, I sold my property in California and I found this beautiful farm in Oregon where it looks so clean and perfect. And I wanted to start an organic garden. And now I find that uh, I'm being sprayed with pesticides and I can't have an organic garden because um, this pesticide stuff is drifting all over. And uh, so I'm really glad that everybody's here and I'm really glad to see the Occupy people here because I've been with them from the first. It's uh, Wall Street government and that's why we're not getting any response to our complaints. So I think we really need to support the Occupy movement. Thanks. Day again, Pitchfork Rebellion, and I just want to let you know that I'm leaving right now, and I'm going to have to pull my car out, and so some of you are going to have to move. But I want to tell you why I'm leaving. I'm leaving to go attend the 2.30 meeting of Occupy Eugene's Vision Committee to discuss getting on the agenda Occupy supporting a couple of events that we have planned coming up, strategic things related to the current how many of you know that there's a current investigation by the state into the pesticide exposures? Raise your hand if you know that. Okay. Well, a couple of key dates related to that are coming up, and we want to do actions. And at least one and maybe two of those actions are going to be in Salem at the physical locations where those government people are. I want to tell you, for these eight years of doing the Pitchfork Rebellion... I've been attending those meetings, and guess who's always in the room at every single one of the important meetings? Monsanto, DuPont, Dow Chemical, Syngenta, the maker of atrazine. They're all there. They control the government. Pitchfork Rebellion, early on, when we gathered testimonials at events like this, and took them to the government and asked them to come out and interview the people, they wouldn't do it. We wondered why. So we investigated them. We did something. The newspaper covered it. It was called the Pitchfork Investigation of the Influence of Big Business over State and Federal Government Agencies. Guess what we found in that investigation? At all the different rallies I've attended, I asked the question, for a several year period, and no one could ever answer this question at the time, it was, who's the head of the EPA, you know what that is, Environmental Protection Agency, who's the head of the EPA for the whole Pacific Northwest? And the answer was Elon Miller, an ex-Dow Chemical executive, who at the time was appointed to protect the environment of the Pacific Northwest was the chief executive officer of a multinational pesticide company based in Japan. She wasn't even living in America when she got made the head of protecting our environment. Does that sound right to you? No! Okay, well, because I've seen What's really happened, what's happened is we have an, a business oligarchy. They have seized control of the United States government. I'm not exaggerating. They're in all the rooms. How many of you know what Clarence Thomas, who Clarence Thomas represented as he was the chief attorney for what corporation? Monsanto. So... I leave now to go meet up with the Occupy Eugene guys and gals, and what I'm hoping is that we can have a major manifestation in Salem, outside of their buildings, to be perfectly honest, at this point in the struggle, I'm ready, non-violently, because I'm a Gandhian, non-violent, civil disobedience type guy, I'm ready to surround their buildings. How many of you would like to surround their buildings? Thank you. I am going to pull out there to go to that meeting, so watch out. What's the address? <laughs> 1274 West 7th. 
the General Assembly <laughs> meeting at 4 o'clock. At 2.30 is a meeting for getting on the agenda at the 4 o'clock meeting, so that's why I'm going to that one. It's right next to the Cornbread Cafe on 7. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is William uh, Carpenter. I'm a member of the Cascadian Action Lab. Um, and I came out here, we've been trying to get out here for a while, and this is the first chance we've had to actually make it. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to say that this planet has a problem. And that problem is people are profits over people. We live in a place, on, in, in a world that all the way down to the city level, your, your local city government, it, it's, it's complete chaos. It's a corporation. It's a corporate run planet. No matter how much stink you make, no matter how you try to follow their rules, no matter how much reform you go after, you will never succeed. We need to take this fight to them. We need to make their lives uncomfortable. We need to make it not profitable to conduct business the way that they do. And that means going to their houses. That means getting in front of the logging equipment, getting in front of the spraying equipment. That means putting your lives on the line like you do every single day here, just living, breathing, and drinking the water. It's time to stop being complacent. It's time for all of us to stop being complacent. That's all I have to say. Folks, I want to remind you that if you haven't signed the petition asking for uh, Governor Kitzhaber to use his executive authority to uh, stop, put, a, put a moratorium on the use of aerial pesticides and then hopefully all pesticides, that's right over here. If you haven't yet signed the banner with your specific message to the governor, which we will deliver uh, when we meet with the governor, also part of our demand, Please, there's markers over here, crayons over here. Please come and do that. Is there anybody else who wants to speak? I would like to say one more thing. Um, I just want to let you guys know, in case you're not aware, that, you know, our government and the corporations just hand in hand, tripping on down the road and loving every minute of it. They've come together to now make political activism. Just standing here put us on, you know, a list that we could be homegrown terrorists. If you guys aren't aware that they've changed laws to make political activism and protesting be the only thing you can be charged for for political ter or homegrown terrorism, then, you know, read the newspaper, wake up. When I said it's all connected, it's all connected. And we either all get connected and pull our heads out and stop it now. Or the complacency is just going to, you know, we're all going to be living in little boxes, going to slave labor jobs, working for the corporation. That's what my grandchildren are going to be. They're going to be working for a corporation. They wake up, they go to work for the corporation, they piss the corporation off, they're going to chop their head off, put them in a hole. All right? You think I'm joking. It's getting to the point now where corporations don't care about people. They're ruining our environment. They don't care about where we live. They don't care about shit. We give them their free reign. It's going to be to the point, generations down the road, where if you cross the corporation, end of life. So, hey, I just want to say again, gratitude for you being here, for speaking from your heart, for sharing your story. Um, you're part of a larger international movement. Just uh, few, two months ago in December, there was a chemical tribunal in India where people came forward to speak their truth and to put the uh, five major chemical companies on trial. Dow, Monsanto, Syngenta, uh, Union Carbide, and one more. Let's hear a round of applause <laughs> for that idea. Yeah. And they did it simply by speaking their story, just like you did here today. Not necessarily scientists and legislators, but the people who were affected. So power to you for speaking. 
empowered you for being here. We again encourage you to, I think you all did sign the petition, and take time to write a letter to your senator, your governor, your newspaper. Take time to get involved with the groups that are here today. Don't forget that we have some guys with really excellent camera equipment and your cleanly filmed narrative would be much appreciated. So just go see Douglas or Gary over there. Uh, talk to Ingrid about health, women's health, and be together as a group. We have more actions planned. We'll keep you in touch. That's why we ask you to sign some of the forms where we can get your email or your um, phone number. Again, Beyond Toxics thanks you for being here. Our brothers and sisters down in Selma are doing their action today as well. And there will be opportunities for you to get involved. So drive safely, stay healthy, and don't be trespassed. Thank you. Thank you.